Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown on how I consume media in a crowded household. So stay tuned. So what do you do when it comes to entertainment when you have a family of five and you don't all like the same things? Now I made a decision a while back to stick with the Apple ecosystem and back in 2011 I purchased an Apple TV which was 1080p native and it was an amazing device. I've still got it right here and I can show you so you know I'm not lying it's right here and yeah it's a, it's just a time capsule of you know what Apple were making and the the foresight that they had back then to produce a device that could do streaming and allow you to do a lot of things that nowadays we take for granted so what I did is I decided to install an Apple TV at all of the TV locations I have around my house now this isn't some kind of weird flex showing that I have a bunch of TVs because these are arguably a little bit dated. The TV that I'm using upstairs for my kids is an old Samsung TV. The one I'm using in my bedroom is a 65 inch 4K TV, but it isn't the latest and greatest. It does do HDR. It's pretty good TV and I do enjoy watching it and it does give me a pretty good experience when I'm lying in bed at night. I have paired that with a soundbar, which also has a sub. It's a 3.1 setup, so you do actually get middle, left and right. It does not compare to obviously a home theater setup, but it is pretty decent when you're lying in bed and you can just sit there and you can hear the sound better than the tinny speakers that come out of the TV itself. The TV that I use for my kids is probably about seven or eight years old. It's a Samsung LED TV, but it still works. It's a full 1080p TV. So I have put a Apple TV 4K up there because potentially I will upgrade to a 4K TV. It's only a 40 inch TV, so it's not very big, but the kids do enjoy playing Jackbox.tv up there. And also any of their PlayStation games work really well, especially at 1080. And this really helps because when we first had our kids, we only really had one TV. And at the time it was occupied with the Wiggles and all the kids shows. So myself and my wife were resorting to watching on iPads or our laptops because that was really the only option we had. By going with the Apple TV 4K ecosystem, we were able to share all of our content across all four devices. So whenever we upgrade or put an app on one of the Apple TVs, it pushes it out to all the other ones, which is awesome. So we purchased the Jackbox series. We've only got a few of them, but they are really fun. And basically I can put it on my main TV and then it will push it out to all of the other Apple TVs without me having to re-log in and re-verify and re-download. So that's a really handy feature of the Apple TV. I did purchase a brand new Sony 4K 75 inch TV for our main area. Because it's a large room, I also had to purchase a soundbar. And this soundbar is pretty decent. The bass from the additional subwoofer really lifts the sound quality coming out of the TV. Unfortunately, my wife would not let me put any home theater grade sound equipment in. She wouldn't even let me put rear speakers in. I really wanted to put some Atmos speakers in. It would have just been amazing because we do use that TV a lot for watching movies. So. It would have been great, but she just didn't want the speakers in visible areas, so I had to stick with the soundbar. That is to say I'm gonna be cheeky and put some tower speakers in one day. I've got my eyes on some Klipsch tower speakers, which I'd really love to put there. But yeah, at the moment, I'm not allowed. So the other location, obviously, that I have of Apple TV 4K is my dedicated home theater. This room is fantastic. I feel really blessed that I have a home theater. I know a lot of people would love to have their own home theater and they just don't because of, they don't have the space or the budget to set one up. I feel really fortunate that I've been in the position finally at 41 years of age that I'm able to do it. So I have set up the best that I can, the equipment that I know will give the best viewing experience. And for me, the Apple TV 4K was a no brainer because it can do Netflix, Stan, Disney Plus, it can do the whole suite of streaming services. So it was a no brainer for me, as well as I have my private media server on Plex, which I won't go into in this video or probably any video for that matter. I can play through my 7.2.4, which is arguably a 5.2.6 because I do have rear mounted surrounds. Because it's up against the back wall, I couldn't actually put speakers in there. Because a bathroom is on the other side, I have a solid sheet of timber. And I don't know why they've done that, but that's how it was during construction. So I can't really muck around with that too much because obviously there's pipes running through that wall and there's tiles on the other side. So it was just easier for me to put some rear speakers for my surrounds. So 
depending on how you want to look at it, I either have a 5.2.6 or I have a 7.2.4. I'd like to say I've got a 7.2.4 and that's how my receiver is uh, programmed and the sound's amazing. I absolutely love it. And I tell you what, for watching movies during this lockdown period, having a dedicated home theater is an absolute blessing. Now on streaming services, I've always been a big advocate for cutting the cord. And in Australia, we are pretty gimped when it comes to streaming services due to geo blocking. There are ways around that using VPNs. Not that I'm advocating breaking any laws, but there are options out there. And most people know about them anyway. In Australia, you do have plenty of options. You've got Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, Stan, and Foxtel to name a few. So do consider checking those services out if you haven't already. You can pretty much get all of the cable stations over in America, and that's something we don't have access to here, like CBS One Access, and there's other cable stations as well that we can't get access to here, due to, again, the geo-blocking restrictions. One of the really cool things about having a streaming box or streaming service running is handoff. The best part about it is, if I wanna watch, say, Narcos on my main Sony TV, then I can be sitting there watching that and then when my wife decides she wants to watch the news or one of her trashy shows like Married at First Sight, she can kick me out and then I can come into the home theater or my upstairs bedroom and I can literally just pick it up from where I left off. This has been really handy during this time because we often do play musical TVs. My kids will want to play Jackbox TV so then I'll have to move from there and go upstairs and then sometimes they want to go upstairs and watch it there and I can come back downstairs. Pretty much my whole household is running an Apple device such as an iPad, an iPod or a phone. If I want to control the Apple TV, any of the Apple TVs, it's available to be used as a remote. So that's super handy. And with the handoff function, I can do that. I can go to any TV and then I can pick up where I left off at another TV. This is a feature that a few streaming services do offer, but Apple do it really well and it's pretty seamless in operation. So that was one of the reasons why I stuck with the Apple TV. When it comes to my dedicated home theater, I generally only use it for special occasions. Now, they seem to be becoming very frequent during this lockdown period. I'd like to really just use them for blockbusters. So recently, you might have seen the new Chris Hemsworth, an Aussie, his new movie Extraction, which was pretty damn good. It was it had Atmos and my system sounded amazing. Now, my kids did not want to watch it. It was pretty brutal. They aren't old enough to really watch it either. My wife had zero interest in watching it. Uh, so I sat in here in my dedicated home theater while my wife was out there watching, I think it was Working Mums on Netflix. Now, I've got no interest in that. So there you go. There's two out of the five already taken care of. My other kids, Two of them were upstairs, I think they were playing Jackbox, and my son was on his laptop. So this is an indication of things that you can do and ways that you can get around being crowded in a household. Especially if you have like three kids like me, it can be quite, you know, confined having that many people in a house. So some great options for streaming devices. You do have the Apple TV 4K, as I mentioned. I'm not spruiking that more than any other, it's just the one that I chose. You've also got the Chromecast, the Fire Stick, and another personal favorite of mine, which I don't have yet, which is the Nvidia Shield. I am looking at buying the pro version of that, just so I can test it out and do a review for you guys. When you make a decision on purchasing one of these streaming boxes, you do have a few things that you need to consider. You need to consider if your TV can support HDR, 4K, and some of the other intricate sound quality detail settings which aren't available on all TVs. I know some TVs support Dolby Vision, some don't, and you might need to pick the streaming hardware that suits your current TV. So make sure you do check the specs on your TV as well as any of the streaming boxes that you decide to buy. I will leave links in the description below to some of the streaming services and the streaming boxes. So if you're interested, do consider checking those out. Right out guys, that's it for this one. A super quick video I just wanted to make because it was something that popped into my head about how I'm coping and my family is coping during this lockdown period. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button for me. It really helps me out on my journey to a thousand subscribers. I'm almost there. So I'd like to thank everyone who has hit the subscribe button and the like button, it really helps out my videos. I have left links in the description to some of the things I have mentioned 
in this video such as streaming boxes and streaming services. So if you're interested, do consider checking those out. I'd like to thank everyone that's hit the subscribe button so far. If you have any questions about anything I've mentioned in this video, please do drop a comment down below. I do read every single comment. It's been getting busier as I've approached this 1000 subscriber milestone and I can tell you that I still check every single message that everyone leaves. Good or bad, I always try to respond. I at least will try and drop a heart or a like on a comment if I don't get a chance, but yeah, generally I will check every single message that comes through. If one thing that this YouTube journey has given me, it's the expansion of the community that I'm creating with this channel. So I'm super stoked that everyone's reaching out to me and connecting with me on Facebook as well as YouTube. Again, I'd really, from the bottom of my heart, I'd really like to thank each and every one of you for watching my videos, hitting the subscribe button and commenting and helping to build what I hope is going to be an awesome community on YouTube for my channel. So again, a big thank you for watching and you'll catch me in the next video. Bye for now. Last time. Yep, yeah, bye. I hope it's recording. Close the door properly.